In a recent video, we took a look at just how many miles an elite rider has to cycle to be competitive. Well, following that, there was plenty of comments um, from both you guys and my colleagues that I should go and give it a go. I lost that argument, so here I am. There's 30 hours in the saddle time, plus some, well, conditioning sessions and far more structure than I've ever seen before in my life. I realized that I wasn't just gonna be mincing around here, like between cafes, but literally every minute of riding is specified as to which heart rate and power zone I should be in. If there's a surefire way to suck the fun out of riding, then this is probably it. Now for a bit of reference, I'm a semi-competitive cat too. I tend to ride about 10 hours a week, but compare that with Ed and he's doing about 26 hours a week. Will I survive? There's only one way to find out. Okay, well that's the bike unpacked. I thought I'd bring the light one because uh, I need every little marginal gain I can get. Uh, there's a few little changes since you last saw it. So the wheels, these are Parkour's Chrono. Thought I'd give them a bit of a crosswind testing out here in the windiest island in existence, I think. Um, and then these are the Challenge Criterium RS TLR tires in 27mm width. Um, they were a bit of fun to get on. They went on fine, actually, but then I tried to set them up tubeless. And, uh, well, because they're open tubelers, they sit flat. And I wanted to use silica sealant because it works miracles. But you can't put it in through a syringe because it blocks any syringe that you put it in. So, uh, yeah, had a bit of fun doing that. What else? Uh, this is a Bajorn Setka saddle, supposedly the lightest 3D printed saddle in the world. Um, I've got my Wahoo Roam V2 up the front. Uh, I think everything else has stayed the same. Uh, the chain is freshly waxed with Silka Wax reviewed. That will be coming soon. And under the saddle, I have a K-Edge mount for the Insta360 X3 camera. Um, obviously, I'm using the Bikebox Allen Triathlon Aero Easy Fit. Um, quite possibly the best bike box in the world, as long as you can fit it in your car and the transfer bus from the airport. Okay, so first ride of the block, we've got four hours to do. Um, zone two, three-ish, so nothing too arduous. Uh, I've got very strict limits that my heart rate is not allowed to go under or over. Um, so that's a bit odd, but yeah, should be right. Better get on with it. Catch you later. Day one, hour and a half in. Look at this view, ready? We've now climbed like a feral chunk of the island. We've got only about 10 minutes left of climbing, maybe even less, until we descend for a bit. But yeah, I just offer a wee Jamie's up ahead, going out of sight. It's a good day, 21 degrees. Sleeves rolled up, sun cream on. Oh, it's so good. Okay, well, that's day one done. I definitely got a bit carried away in places. I reckon it was about six minutes over the prescribed heart rate, but I couldn't let Ed have all the town sign sprints, could I? Anyway, uh, I did also forget that I've changed bike computer since last riding this bike, so missed out on the first hour or so of power recording, so. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. And uh, yeah, on the whole, legs are feeling all right. Got some tan lines starting already, so, uh, but I'm just dreading tomorrow's session, really. I'll uh, see you then. Okay, so legs are a little bit achy after yesterday, and while today's ride is a bit of a mammoth, five hours with four times 15 minute intervals at just under threshold. That does mean that I might be seeing a lot less of Ed today, as he'll be doing around 390 watts, I think, and I'm hoping to complete them at, say, 310. Maybe he'll be feeling kind and come and uh, find me after each one. Uh, I think the plan is to do a few of them on the flat, uh, that's apparently good for leg speed and I'll try and sit on for those and then the others will be on a climb and I don't really stand a chance there. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a shell now. Ed keeps shouting at me that I'm not eating properly. But I got through quite a lot I think, I got through Four 500ml bottles, each with 30 grams of carbs, a few cereal bars, a gel, some energy chews, 
and some of these cake things, but apparently that's still not enough. Now, I did actually manage 310 watts for the, the efforts, so that's a success really, isn't it? I've done like four times 15 minute efforts before, but generally on Zwift and not as part of a five hour ride. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. It makes them a lot harder. But no efforts tomorrow, just five hours, I think. Uh, Ed will tell me <laughs> if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna channel my inner Ineos and eat an absolute shed load of rice and hope that that works miracles on me overnight. Well, today, I must be honest, I've been perfectly happy to stay in bed. I didn't really want to go on the ride. Serious leg doms, and uh, the weather wasn't spectacular, so that wasn't overly motivating either. Um, but anyway, apparently had to ride anyway. Uh, got the five hours done. I think Ed's going to go and add an extra hour because I held him up so much. Um, I won't be joining, funny enough. Uh, <laughs> that was more than enough. I am seriously craving some food, so I think I'm going to eat some of that instead. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of comments about the lack of ROTC kit, but I didn't keep on top of my washing because after yesterday's ride, I fell asleep instead of doing it. So uh, <laughs> that's not very really good. Um, but although it is actually quite nice to wear a different chamois, as I do get on really well with the stolen goat stuff, but if you're going on a training camp, then I would recommend taking several pairs of shorts that you like because however good your favorite pairs of shorts are the, the bit of variety you'll you'll thank, be thankful for it well good is relative but yeah it's rest day however as you might have noticed i'm still in kit because unlike my normal rest day ed says we've still got to ride for about 90 minutes to two hours and what i have done is convinced him to go down the coast because it's flat but well i might even convince him to go to a cafe you never know grab some lunch and uh i'm just glad there's no efforts so yeah off we go okay so i'm not exactly feeling rejuvenated but i don't want to be too defeatist but i don't know if i'm going to be able to make it through the efforts today it's another one of those bloody four times 15 minutes cp sessions but it's slightly better because they're in a four hour ride, not a five hour ride. So let's go do it. Okay, well, I think I've made a mistake. That is three out of four efforts done. Oh, uh, I'm done for. You know, I said it would be easier because they're in a shorter ride. That was, that was a lie. They just come thicker and faster than before. So we're about two and a half hours in, that's three of the efforts done. I've got about half an hour into the next one. I'm going to pop a gel and then I'm out of food, but we'll just worry about getting home when, when time comes. Cross that bridge when we get to it, as they say. Oh man, Ed's somewhere long up the road, so hopefully he waits and then I can have a tow to the next segment. Yeah, so back home now. Sorry for not doing much video today. I've been in an absolute box from like basically start to finish. Ed definitely seems to be suffering less than me. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the last three years of training he's done. But there we go. Day six now. Um, I'm feeling oh, I'm knackered. Um, I'm really lacking the motivation to go out and ride today. Um, we've got five and a half hours planned, but. There's no efforts, really, just a bit of tempo. In Ed's words, nothing too arduous, so I somehow doubt that's going to be the case. Five seconds, come on! I survive. Can I the island? 180 clicks. James has 150 because he's got a meeting. I do. Because he's important. I'm not. <laughs> uh, we are fairly tired. We had a nice meal last night at the pub. Had uh, just about coped with two beers. Yeah, it took me a while to drink two beers, but 
don't want to go too fast because it'd have gone downhill after yesterday's ride. Uh, but yeah, six hours, maybe even six hours plus today. Jamie's got the 360 camera on the back of his bike, which is like kind of weirdly placed there. And I'm gonna have my GoPro in my mouth watching Jamie. <laughs> so the good news is it might shut head up. You literally can't do this many hours on a bike and have a proper job. There's just too much that gets in the way. I do actually have a newfound respect for, well, any elite level athlete, really. Well, I don't think it just randomly started, did it? <laughs> okay, so final day. I'm seriously going to sleep well on the plane tomorrow. Uh, plan today is three hours and I don't think there's any intervals or anything so it should be an all right one. So we're almost done. Uh, final half of the final ride of Elite Training Week. Um, I must admit I did have a bit of a sense of humour failure in the first half. Uh, I thought Ed was half wheeling me but it turns out that I just couldn't ride above 200 watts because my legs are so shot. Uh, but it's got better. Um, Ed just had an effort at Mirador del Rio. I think he got the calm, judging off his wahoo time. Uh, so that's depressing. I was maybe leading him out. <laughs> I lasted about 30 seconds uh, and <laughs> on a 20 minute segment. So I wasn't much used there. Um, yeah, but we turned around. Um, it's mostly descending now. I've got Tailey. So morale is much higher. We've had a mess about just being idiots. Um, and actually enjoying cycling, which is an odd concept given the rest of the week. I've uh, not wanted to go on a few of the rides and you know, motivation hasn't always been the highest, but it's what cycling's all about. Having fun on rides. Ride because you enjoy it. Anyway, a few K to go until I'm back and then We'll have a full debrief. Catch you later. So I did it. I survived a week of elite level training, but I don't think I could or would want to do any more than that. Ed came into this as the third week of a training block, whereas I came into it fully rested. The training peaks and strata grass do look good though. So what have I learned? What, and have I got any better? Well, I learned that it takes a hell of a lot of commitment, time, energy, and sacrifice to make it as a competitive cyclist. And I've also got to remember that I've done this 26 hour week in the sun. Riders like Ed do this week in, week out, no matter the weather. Yes, I got rained on once or twice, but I was never forced inside or on, on the turbo, for example. And it was nearly always about 20 degrees, so not bad at all, really. Then there's the fact that the more miles you do, the more chance of injury and illness there is. I've seriously cycled myself into the ground this week. My body is seriously in need of recovery, both physically and mentally, but I can't imagine that my immune system is particularly strong either. Although my back did pull through, I'm not sure how many weeks it would last, and that brings us on to an important point. It's actually a pretty stupid idea to suddenly ramp up your training by quite so much volume or intensity. Progressive overload is the tried and tested method for getting faster safely, and there's no shortcuts to fitness. There's lots of software that can help you with this, I've been using Training Peaks and Strava Premium throughout my training and both tell you recommended ramp rates and also suggest recovery if you're overdoing it. I would recommend not relying purely on data though. Listen to your body. Only you really know if you're feeling under the weather or have a niggle and it's important to be honest with yourself. Having two weeks off for example with illness is going to have a far bigger impact than missing that three hour ride. It's also worth pointing out that your training should be tailored to you, whereas I've just copied Ed's plan, which is specific for this time of year and him and some super long road races. Riders who want to compete in shorter events, for example, can get away with slightly less volume. I think I might be doing that. Right, well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. That's fly home, have a lazy week, and then prepare myself for an FTP test. It better be a good one after all of this. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave us a like and comment and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. We'll see you next time, hopefully with far less achy legs. Oh my gears. 
Ini Andrew Open. <laughs> 